Sorry, I didn't see you there. I was just admiring the beauty of this magnificent case. Let me ask you a question. When you see a case like this, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Go ahead, take a minute, think about it, let me know. No, 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 no. Really think about it, come on. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a little tacky, it's definitely huge, and it lets people know you had way too much money to spend. Regardless of what your feelings are about this case, there's no denying, the style is iconic and you'll never get mistaken for anything but an Alienware. I picked this case up about a year ago for 20 bucks on the Facebook Marketplace. This was another one of those situations where I wasn't even searching for it and Facebook was just showing me things that I wanted to buy. It's like they have a direct feed into my brain of things that I'm interested in. Well, I guess we kind of already knew that. The guy I got it from said he paid about $4,000 for this back in the day, but he was using it to farm WoW accounts and sell them, so it was like an investment to him. It's crazy to think people used to buy those accounts back in the day. I mean, what's the point in that? Where's the sense of pride and accomplishment? So this computer's been sitting around for a while, and when I initially got it, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. I thought maybe I'd do a supercomputer build in it. Well, as super as I can get on my budget. But I thought that's been kind of a little overplayed, so I put it on the shelf. So I had the idea to build this thing up to like the original specs of what it might have been when you ordered this back in the day. Figuring out what this case originally had in it was a little tricky. I only had two clues to go off of. One was the model on the back, which states it's an Aurora model PC. And two, there's a Windows Vista sticker hidden under the drive bay right here. With those two pieces of information, I was able to decipher this was from around the 2007 era. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Thanks to the Wayback Machine, I was able to look up an Alienware configurator page from 2007 and see exactly what options were offered for this model PC. During my research, I found that this case is used for both the Aurora model and the Area 51. And the only difference I could find was that the Aurora models had AMD processors and the Area 51 had Intel. But if I'm wrong, be sure to let me know down below. Using that info, I'm happy to do an AMD build in this because I've never actually done a retro AMD build and I thought that might be fun. Looking at the processor options, I ended up going with an AMD Athlon X2 6000 Plus. This is a dual core CPU, clocked at three gigahertz, and it was only $15, so I went with it. Figuring out which motherboard to use was a little tricky. The website only lists it as Alienware approved and that it's SLI compatible. So I did some searching for AM2 compatible motherboards with SLI. So I ended up going with this Asus M3N72D, and after shipping, it only cost me 25 bucks. Something in the graphics card options really caught my eye. An 8800 GTS, which I just happened to have already from a failed build from a while back. But I wasn't just content with one card. The configurator page offers SLI for a $200 premium, so that's what I was gonna go with. I ended up picking up another identical 8800 for $25. For RAM, I had four gigs of DDR2 laying around, so that's what I'm gonna go with. For power, I'm gonna go with this Coolmax 700 watt unit. I'll eventually run out of these random power supplies I have kicking around, but until then, I'll keep using them. This power supply sure is ugly, but it kind of looks like it's from the time period, so I think it'll fit in nicely. For the CPU cooler, I was trying to find one of those ridiculous turbine style ones from the early 2000s, but I was coming up short in my searches. Then I remember that AMD hasn't changed their cooler mounting design in like forever, so I'm just gonna use the Wraith cooler that came with my 3700X. For storage, I'm just gonna use a regular SATA SSD. There's no way I'm gonna torture myself using a hard drive, even if I use the 10,000 RPM Raptor. Now that we know what's gonna go in it, let's take a closer look at the case. You can see it has this gloss finish that I'm not a fan of. When I got it, there was various stickers on it that needed to be removed, and you can see here, it scratches really easily. The front has the classic alien look to it with some standard front panel IO and this door to hide the drives. The side panel leaves a little bit to be desired. It's all solid and hides away the PC that you just paid way too much money for. Speaking of these side panels, they come off in a way that I have not been able to easily put them back on, and it normally takes me a few tries to get it right. Nothing to note on the back, it looks just like a standard case, and there's only one small exhaust fan. Looking inside, I guess this is why they don't have a case window. It's very plain looking. Unpainted metal, no cable management. Imagine paying $4,000 and then seeing the inside of this. It'd be a bit of a disappointment. Looking at the case, I thought it was really weird that they only had one exhaust fan in here. I mean, there is this one for the hard drives, but that doesn't count. For a high performance machine, I would have expected them to go all out with cooling. I mean, there's a lot of empty space in here. This case also has built-in RGB that uses this card that looks like a laptop RAM stick. 
The side panel has some contact connectors that have definitely seen better days. I'm not sure if I can bend these back to work, but we'll see what we can do. Spoiler alert, it doesn't work. Now that I've given you the full tour, it's time to put it all together. I'm sure it's all going to go perfectly fine with no hiccups. Now before I even attempt to cable manage this, I better test it out first to make sure it's all good before I spend too much time on it. Well, what the hell is that? Whatever, I'm sure it's fine. Let's get Windows installed. Alright, check the graphics card and... oh man. I decided to take the card apart and take a look inside to see if there was anything I could do. And, other than it being extremely dusty, nothing looked crazy out of place. Not sure how to proceed with this, I thought to myself, what would Linus do? So, I stripped it down all the way, shoved it in the oven. I mean, what did I have to lose? $25? I baked it at 375 degrees for 10 minutes, and took it out and set it on the windowsill to cool like a warm apple pie. And after putting it all together, I put it in and those artifacts were gone. Now let's check Device Manager. Hey look, it's all fixed. Now that I confirmed it was all working, it was time to clean up these cables and make it look nice. And I guarantee you're not going to believe this transformation. Just kidding, it looks like crap. And this cheap power supply isn't helping either, but I'm sure it doesn't look much worse than what you would have gotten from Alienware directly. Ah, it's the moment I've been waiting for. The testing. I can't imagine how excited someone would have been getting this back in 2007. I mean, with the SLI cards, you'd be able to power through anything, right? Right? Let's just say my testing showed some less than expected results. And I know what you're thinking, but no, it's not the cooked graphics card. I tested them separately and I got the same thing. So let's take a closer look. The first thing I threw at it was 3 Mark 06. And this was the perfect precursor to what the results were gonna be to come. It looked like it was running fine, but I noticed the GPU usage was pretty low on both cards. It finished with a score of 9,769, which, according to my research, is about what a single card gets. So, I tested with a single card, and sure enough, my score was pretty close to the SLI score. No worries. Maybe 3D Mark doesn't scale well with SLI. Let's throw a real game at it. Bioshock released in 2007, so it should be a good match for this system. And my initial testing showed I was getting great frames easily above 100 on the highest settings at the monitor's native resolution of 1680 by 1050. Then I tested a single card expecting to find massive drops and no, it's pretty much the same. Okay, well, next up was Crisis. Now I know it's cliche to run Crisis, I mean, does it run Crisis? But it was actually released in the same year as this PC, so I thought it was a great fit. I found this Crisis benchmark tool to get consistent results, 
Surely I'll see the SLI flex its muscles now, right? Running on medium settings, it turned up an average score of 45 frames per second on SLI. Then I ran a single card and, oh come on, 49 frames per second. Maybe a newer game will show a difference. I threw on Diablo 3. It came out in 2012, and I think five years is a decent lifespan to expect from such a high-end machine. I loaded up my abandoned character that hasn't been seen since 2013 or so, and jumped back into the world. Performance was pretty good, offering playable frames at native resolution. So I switched to a single card and, yep, no tangible difference. At this point, I know what you're saying. You're obviously doing something wrong. You baked a card in the oven and you expect it to work. Well, I knew you were gonna say that. And I tested both cards individually and I got the same scores on each card, so I know it's working fine. I started reading up on old threads and all I got was people saying, some games just don't support SLI very well. So I guess I picked a bad batch of games to test. My last hope for something, anything, was to run the Heaven benchmark. It's never let me down before, so I fired it up with one card and I got a score of 412. I took a deep breath, I loaded up SLI, and I ran it again, and wait, is it true? I don't believe it. 767. That's a real score difference, not some margin of error crap I've been dealing with. And what's this? When running the benchmark both cards are pushing 100% usage? I was so relieved to see an actual difference and prove that my setup was working correctly. But I guess a better benchmark score doesn't mean anything when your games perform the same, or sometimes worse, than with a single card. But hey, two cards in there looks pretty cool, am I right? And I think that's about all there is to talk about on this build. Quickly finding out that these retro builds take a lot longer than expected, and the performance is never quite what you think it should be. Imagine being back in 2007. You spend $4,000 on this PC, you finally get it hooked up, and you only get about half the performance you're expecting. That'd be a huge letdown. I know SLI has a history of not being supported well, but this was ridiculous. I picked all AAA titles that should have had SLI support built into them. I realized there might have been something I overlooked in all this, and if I did, please let me know. I'm dying to see what the real potential of this machine is. But I tested this thing for days. I researched on forums, I tried different drivers, and no matter what I did, I always came up short. So I hope you enjoyed this build. Even though the performance wasn't what I expected, I still had fun and enjoyed putting it together. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.